And I think a call to the prophetic is actually a call to intercession, come on. not a call come to on. a platform and not a call to share. I feel like most people come under the fog or come under the performance, emotional performance thing because they're so concerned about how to share it. When it's like, no, there's nothing to share. Mm. You have a powerful place in the heavenlies, in the place of prayer. Uh, uh, with the prophetic and being authentic um, and in times of, in a sense, rejection or where people may not be accepting you, uh, you know, rejecting you. And uh, I'm sure you may have dealt with this in your own life, but how do you deal with that? Oh, you just, it, the Bible's very clear. You dust off your feet and move on. Yeah. That's, I'll just be really transparent. Like, that's why we don't charge. We don't charge yeah. any money for anything. Wow. And we pay our own way. Wow. Because at the end of the day, if I can see it's triggering you, like, let's just say you're not even rejecting me outright. But I can see this is like, I did this. Sure, yeah. And you were like, that doesn't fit in here. Dude, keep your money. We're mm. not stressed. Don't need an offering. Wow. It's, we're good. My hands are clean. Your heart's pure. I know you love Jesus. I'm not worried about it at all. Yeah. People are on these beautiful journeys. Like, and when the journeys on, collide, how much more beautiful is that? I can learn something from it. What part triggered you? Well, you said X, Y, Z wow, that was it. Like that part. Yeah, that was, I just, I, I don't know about that. Or no. some people will be a little more aggressive. Very rarely. I mean, very, very rarely in 20 years. But at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, cool. What can I learn from this? Well, I guess I could phrase that differently. Yeah. I'm glad you said something, you know? Oh, did, how did that appear? And I just love it. I love the journey. So I'm like a man of the journey. I love the process, love the journey. I'm Come not on. trying to get to a finish line. So I recognize that as a 40 year old dude who spent half his life in ministry, I have tons to learn still Come on. from Come people on. older and younger than me. Come and on. I'm totally willing to be on that journey. Yeah. Wow. So good. Jake, I want to close with this question here. Yeah. Uh, you are, I mean, you are a prophetic voice. I remember uh, in my younger days listening to Mark by Heaven, you know, driving in the car and just, you know, <laughs> shouting the anthem and just going wild, going bananas, yeah. bro. Making my passenger seat like, yeah, come on, let's yeah, this. We're going for it. Exactly. Like, I, I remember those days. I love it, man. Come on. Uh, but, you know, how important do you think it is for people who are musically talented, uh, who have these uh, artistic giftings? Oh, come on. Uh, uh, but then to, you know, move into prophetic and not in a sense be too weird emotionally or get depressed or fogged under that, yeah. but, you know, be empowered by the Spirit of God, if that makes sense. Well, I think a lot of it, I mean, our journey is a journey in the knowledge of God. So it depends on what you're pursuing. If I start pursuing my gifts more than I'm pursuing God, then at the end of the day, I'm going to end up in a place like that. I'm going to mm. be over emotional because my eyes aren't fixed. Yep. My eyes have to stay fixed on Jesus. I have to keep my eyes fixed, not on my gifted, not on my, not on my gifts, not my talents. Those things, those things I give attention to because I want to grow them. So I pay attention to them or I practice guitar. I write songs, all those things, you know, oh, is that a word from the Lord? I'm not sure. My prophetic journey began by God giving me a name in my spirit and I would just call them up on the phone and say, hey, I was thinking about Love you. It. Yeah. And so there's no weird emotionalism there. We don't over exaggerate it. We're, no, we're not performing. We're not coming under this cloud of like, I hear the Lord and nobody else hears because that's not actually the point. Mm -hmm. The point is, if, if Jeremiah, it says, if any man considers himself a prophet, then let him intercede. Mm. And I think a call to the prophetic is actually a call to intercession, Come on. not a call Come to on. a platform and not a call to share. Come on. I, t I tell most people when it comes to the prophetic, 75 to 80% of what you will receive is a call to prayer, not a call to, to, uh, to share. A call to prayer, not a so call good. to share. Yep, yep. And I feel like most people come under the fog or come under the performance, emotional performance thing because they're so concerned about how to share it. When it's like, no, there's nothing to share. Mm. You have a powerful place in the heavenlies, in the place of prayer. Come on. And so I just feel like, I, for me, I'm like, I know the authority I have in prayer. I mean, that, all those songs were birthed in a prayer room. Come on, man. All they are yep. is prayers that yep. I shouted for six hours with Come two on. people in the room. And it's like, no wonder they, so good. I mean, people are so concerned with the performance, the, the, all the stuff. Like, no, just be you. Yeah. Keep your eyes fixed. You get a little off, just repent and get your eyes back. Don't get all stressed out about, just fix your eyes. Just keep your eye. It's so much simpler than we want to make it, yep, you yep. know? And so that's, I, that's why I'm always just like, it sounds maybe like a corny answer, but I'm like, man, 
That is the hardest thing I do in my life, mm. honestly. Mm. Uh, platforms, writing, relation, fi- keeping that those my sights fixed on Jesus as the priority of my life, that is the hardest thing I do every single day because the entire world we live in wants to pull us from that. And I ain't talking about sin and the devil. I am talking about well-meaning religious church people yeah. who want to f- your, affection, your affection and your attention to be fixed on mm. them. And we can't, the best way to serve them is to keep my eyes fixed on him. Come on, so good. Jake, I'm gonna ask one last question, okay? Hey. But if we could be short here. Yeah. Uh, uh, earlier you said that when you were uh, in Thailand two years ago, you know, oh, of yeah, course yeah. you love ministering in the crowds and you know, with Mama love Heidi it. and all these people, but you also wanted to go to the red light district. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, uh, share with us just h- how you are managing or balancing that, that so when place. I went to Europe this last time, I in, a, in, in one week, I played a, a stadium of 17,000, a home church of five, a, a park in a Russian neighborhood, Come on. Um, a local church of 50 that doesn't believe in miracles, um, a on. heavy metal club, and then another arena of 5,000. Come on. That's my week. So, and so good. what we do is we go, we're doing it all. Because this, all of those expressions have the same value. Come on. Not one of them. There is no scale. When God looks at all of those, he's not looking at like, well, that one has had the bigger speakers. Oh, that one has a really good sound system. Do you understand? I was just in the UK. I set up my own sound system the first night. I'd flown 24 hours to get there through the night. I get there. They don't know how to work their sound system in a kindergarten classroom where they move the chairs. I help them set up the sound system. We plug it in. I get it working for them. We got a, like a tiny little drum set, and I don't have like any, I'm just like plug in. Let's go. The anointing is the same. The anointing is the come anointing. Come on, come on. And if you're only feeling it in stadiums, it's I promise you, it's not the anointing. Come on. I promise Ooh, you, it's come not on. the anointing. Come on, brother. Like, and I do that to keep my wow. heart like clean. I, I have to answer for this. Yeah. Like at the end of my life, I'm like I have to answer for this stuff. And I want my hands clean and pure. I don't care if it makes me any money. I don't care if nobody knows my name. My hands have to be clean and my heart has to be pure because that's who gets to ascend. And that's all I care about. Ooh, I glory. want to go up the mountain with Jesus. And no, so we just keep our, our landscape very like, you know. So <laughs> good. Like, I love that. That's yeah. just how we do it. So, so good. So. Jake, I'm wrecked. Thank you for being Uh, you. Thank you. Uh, Before we uh, close off in a prayer of impartation here, uh, how can people find you, follow you, and all that? Oh, see, Breezy, Uh, we can go, you can go to oneflesh.com. You go to jakehamiltonmusic.com. You can find all of our information, travel stuff, everything there. Uh, Oneflesh.com, just uh, like at the beginning of next year, we're actually transitioning it to us unto death. So we're going to change it to us unto death. You can find all the marriage stories there, all that stuff. Awesome. So, yeah. Wow, Jake, so good. Yeah. Can you look at that camera at our friends, our audience? Yes. And just release over the people who are in this journey of prophecy mm-hmm. and life. Well, yeah. I just bless you right now. First of all, I bless your journey. Like I just declare over you, God doesn't miss a thing, number one. And number two, you are not alone. The devil wants to convince you you are alone and that God has forgotten you and it's all not true. We just break those lies off of you right now in Jesus' name. I also declare that you're that some of you think you're in rebellion and you're not in rebellion. You're actually a reformer, but there's no Come culture on. around you to understand the difference between rebellion and reformation. Come on. So don't 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 let self-fulfilled prophecy happen to you where you believe you're actually in rebellion. And we just break that off of you. Don't no, humility. We just speak tenderness. We speak vulnerability. We speak clean hands and a pure heart over you. And most of all, we speak identity and courage into the center of who you are. How dare you think less of yourself than God thinks of you? How dare you think less of yourself than God thinks of you? You don't have to settle. You get to dream. And we release dreams and visions over your life to see what he sees, to see what he's doing so that you could partner with him on this planet for the short, brief vapor that we have on, on, on this earth in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank Jake, you. what a pleasure. Thank, Thank you so you much, so brother. Much, God you bless you. Thank you.